and welcome to The Knitting Game and Other Stuff. I'm your host, Leslie, and this is episode 56, yes, 56, for March 13th, uh, 2013, so 3-13-13. Some got some good threes going on. Um, should be a shorter show. I don't have any voting. I'm going to take a break for a little bit. No game, per se as far as that goes, but I've got lots to share, so I'm going to get right into it. Um, if you want to check out the show notes and the links to everything and uh, that I talk about, you can uh, find that at myordinaryjourney.com. It's all one word. If you're not already there, it's right up there. If, uh, if you're tuning in, say, on Blip directly or iTunes or however you get it and you're not on the blog, but you want to get links to the stuff I talk about, that's a great place to go. Uh, you can get links to uh, all the social networking stuff, so follow me on Plurk and, you know, look me up on Ravelry. So, and there is also our Ravelry group, uh, and you can find a link to that as well as the show notes. Um, well, you link to the Rav group on the show notes. All right. So in our Ravelry group this week, we had one new member, so I would like to welcome Jackie Knits, and that is Jackie to the group. Yay! <laughs> so hi, Jackie. Um, and then we do have some birthdays. Uh, I mentioned these last week, these first two, but their birthdays are today, so I figured I'd mention them again, because that's kind of cool, the birthdays are today. So, the yarn goes on, and Jet Girl 13, you're 13, Katie, and Lisa Marie. So, happy birthday, ladies. Today is your day. And then we've got Knitting Mummy of Six, and that is Amanda, and Melissa Knits, and that's Melissa, and their birthdays are later on in the week. So, hi guys, and happy birthday. I hope you get lots and lots of goodies. So some shout outs and announcements, I really don't have anything um, as far as shout outs and announcements. The one thing I do have is if you selected the bag option for the Armed Forces Fiber Fanatics Charity Sock Yarn Club, the bags came this week and they are spectacular. I love them to death. So they are really cute. Alright, so that's about all I've got as far as the beginning of the show stuff, so I'm going to get into the knitting game. Um, although not a knitting game winner per se, uh, the Vittorio was the first pattern in that list of the prior pr pattern prioritization that I did the last few months, so I cast that on right away because of course I had to, and I've been working on it pretty good. So this is what I've got so far, and the pattern is coming along swimmingly. This is about as wide as it'll get. It will get, I think. I don't think I add any more increases across. So I think this is as wide as it will be. Um, it's very. It's an easy pattern, but it's not one that I'm finding easy to memorize. So I kind of have to, at least at the beginning and the end of each row, I have to think about what I'm doing and not just on one side. It's, there's little things you have to do on both the right side and the wrong side. So you've got to kind of pay attention. Once you get into this middle part here though, where you're doing some of the increases and decreases, it's not too bad. You can kind of, you know, just go with the flow. Um, but yeah, you gotta you gotta kind of pay attention. I will tell you that much. Uh, the one really awesome thing that I really like is um, that every single row is written out from beginning to end. So <clears throat> even the edge stitches here, because there's stuff that you do on either side of these markers. So it's not like on a shawl where you're doing like a garter stitch rib on the outside. Um, there's stuff you do here 
and if you can see it's not quite or exactly straight so what's really neat about the fact that every single line is written out and I'm sure I could go longer and modify the pattern and make it longer or wider than what it calls for I'm not going to but I can tell you exactly how much of this I have finished I have exactly 25% of the shawl finished so it's going to be four times as long <laughs> so it'll be about that wide or wider when I get it done so that is the kind of cool part is I know exactly where I am in this pattern um, I'm using Chowgu my Chowgu red lace needles these are not interchangeable these are fixed um, I don't have written down what size they are I think they're six yes these are my Chowgu they're size six I believe they're on a they are a 24 inch from tip to tip and I love them my red lace and then I'm using uh, diabolical yarn for my yarn and I can't pronounce the colorway so I'm not gonna try you gotta look it up to find out and I have that in my Zen master yoga frogs bag uh, everybody loves this bag when I bring it out they're like oh my gosh those frogs are so cute and I'm like aren't they though so uh, I have that going all right so the next thing is my easy 100th camping anniversary half circle shawl I just completely botched that up these are on my nitpick circulars uh, as you can see I made about two rows of progress this week but I did make progress so there it is so two rows I'm not gonna lie not as much as I would have liked but hey progress is progress right so this is knit picks gloss um, yarn that I over dyed it was a gray a steely gray that I over dyed with my own concoction of Kool-Aid to make it like this maroon color and there are some still speckles of gray so that looks kind of neat it's different it's very nobody else will have that so that's good um, and I have it in my okay this is a little weird one but this is my um, I don't know what you my umbrella bag it's long because I wanted to make sure that the umbrellas were up I'm having issues here sorry so I wanted to make sure the umbrellas were vertical <laughs> instead of horizontal on a bag so I made it long and wide which is fine let's see in the inside all in. because the shawl because it's big and kind of bulky it's nice because it has room to stretch out and it does it fits the shawl it fits a cake of yarn and the pattern all in there and I lay the pattern on top between the shawl and the zipper because it is a zipper and that way um, it keeps the uh, yarn from getting stuck in the zipper if that's a worry or concern that's a little tip or trick I use to keep it from happening so I don't have to worry so there is that all right and that was all I had for the knitting game type projects so again no voting this week so you guys are off the hook I just haven't found I mean I have a ton of books over there and I really shouldn't say I haven't found anything to inspire me because yeah I have a ton of books over there that I really should be using but I need to take some time and kind of catch up I'm flirting with the idea of knitting to zero not monogamously as you can tell but um, I'm thinking about it I know some other folks friends of mine that are um, knitting to zero and I think maybe that would be a good like palette cleanser just get everything off the needles get recentered refocused and then hard charge on with some other projects but before I do that I have some more knitting to share with you guys all right so Saturday well a couple of weeks ago I picked up some yarn to do 
the Rocky Coast cardigan. I picked up some Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. I had coupons for Joann's, 50% off, and I'm a big girl, so I need to knit the big size, so I needed a lot of the yarn, so I had to buy a bunch, so I figured, you know what, I've got all these 40 and 50% off coupons. I'm going to take advantage of it, so I'm going to buy the yarn. And I already have the Sayuri sweater on the needles, sort of, but I haven't been working on it, and I'm like, I already have a sweater on the needles. I have another sweater that I want to design for my husband, so that's another sweater's worth of wool uh, yarn that I have. I don't need to cast on this other sweater right now. So I was doing really great. I was like holding out and really resisting the urge, and then Saturday, that's, I was going to the little knitting group at the knit shop, and I was meeting Courtney Stitches Please over there, and I was going to knit cupcakes for her party favors for her wedding, because she's knitting her flowers, and I was going to knit the cupcakes. Yeah, that one didn't happen. I, I was, I was such a sucker, and I did it. I did. I did. I cast on the Rocky Coast cardigan. So let me show you my insanity. So here is, I'm in the middle of the row and it goes fast. I did most of this at the yarn shop on Saturday. Um, I'm still doing the increases. This is just the top of it. Um, I'm still kind of learning as I go along. So you can tell here, I've got the arm increases over here that I'm working. So this will this will be the top around the neck and the collar and the back and the shoulders. So here, this is the front. This is the sleeve. This is the back. So I'm in the middle of one of the patterning rows. So I'm doing some of the cable work and you can see it's coming out. Um, I'm just kind of going for it. It is really easy to memorize the pattern. Um, I just have to remember, and I'm keeping meticulous track of the increases, the raglan increases on the arms. And I did look at the pattern and the errata for this one said that a lot of people were complaining that they didn't really have enough room through the back and the shoulders and through the yoke. So they increased the number of raglan increases done before you, I guess, pull the stitches off for the sleeves. So, and set the stitches aside. So I'm gonna try that because I do have, I don't know, I, I have a very muscular upper body, especially in the back. I know you can't really ever see what I look like from, you know, the chest down or whatever, but I am and I'm, I've got a lot of bulk <laughs> up top. So I want to make sure I have enough room. I want it to be, I don't want it, to, it's supposed to have positive ease and I don't want it to be skin tight. I don't want it to be like sucked to me. And I would like extra stitches in the arm area, especially around the biceps. So I want to make sure I give myself the opportunity to do that. Um, so I'm going to do the extra increases. So, um, I am using some of the stats here. I'm using my Chowgu Red Lace Interchangeable. These are the large size. I got the full set, so I have the large and the small. So these are 10 and a half, and I put them on the 24 inch cable because I think any bigger than that, and it would have been too much cable to futz around with. So um, that's that. I'm using the Lion Brand Fisherman's Wool. I have three skeins from the same dye lot and one that's not, so every once in a while I'm going to throw in a couple of rows of the not one and see what happens. I'm not too concerned about it being matchy matchy, super duper matchy, or like three quarters of it being the same color and then just slightly different. Really, you've got to probably be right on me in the sun in order to really notice it, so I'm not going to worry about it. So that is one project, and I'm keeping my yarn. I have, this is one skein, mind you, of the fisherman's wool. I, I hate pulling 
yarn from the outside it just it annoys me it bothers me because it catches on things and it rolls around and I don't like that I like center pull so I rewound one of the um, outside pull hanks into two center pull cakes so and I keep everything in this is um some of you may recognize it this is my Anders Mill bag and Anders Mill is the bag maker that's doing the bags for the AF3 club so this was the bag that came uh, with the army shipment so it's pink digi camo so with a little wrist loop up at the top so I'm using my Anders Mill bag for that usually I use my own but really I didn't have enough and this one is awesome and it's super it, this is their large box bag and as you can see I mean it it holds two large cakes um, plus the project with like room to I mean there's oodles of room in there so it's awesome so that's where I'm keeping that project everybody's been showing their bags and I never do so I figured I would this time around all right so the other project I've been working on are my Aurora socks and like I said I last time I was going to rip out the patterning that um, I had started to do and then I was going to um, just knit plain stock in it so here is the sock I don't remember the last time you guys saw the sock probably when I was still working down here on the toe area but here's the sock so when I ripped it back I was probably I had probably done to about this black stripe right here so I ripped it back to the heel and I knit up the leg and I could stop I've probably got a good two and a half inches of ribbing here but I'm not going to I'm going to use this all up and truly make them a half and half socks so the heel I used was a little bit different. It's a gusseted heel, but I did toe up. So the heel puts the gusset on the bottom of the foot underneath the heel instead of on the side. And I think that is so clever. This is a, a heel by Wendy Johnson. So that is the heel that I used. And I think it's pretty neat. So I've tried it on. It fits wonderfully. So there it is. And these I'm doing on my Chagu Red Lace. Um, they're one and a half inch, uh, US one and a halfs, and I'm doing two circulars. I have 16 inch um, circulars. I will say I probably would go with a 24 if I had to do it over again. Um, they're working out just fine. I think I'd like that little extra bit of room because when I start going around, you can see to I knit like this instead of probably like this, like I should. So it gets a little tight sometimes. It's not a bad thing. And obviously I've made a ton of progress in a week, so it's not impeding me too badly. So. Um, the yarn, this is Sunset Stitches, um, Sunset Sock Base, it's 80-20 wool, merino, and, uh, and nylon, so 80% wool, 20% nylon, and it's in the Aurora Borealis colorway, but you know what, I just, I don't see the Aurora Borealis in these socks, I really see Caribbean Cool. So I may actually rename these to my Caribbean Cool Socks because I just think the colors remind me of like really awesome water. I don't know. I'm just not seeing the Aurora in these. I'm just, I'm seeing the Caribbean. And the bag I'm using for this one, <laughs> this is my, yeah, prototype of my first uh zipper experiments I was experimenting with new zipper insertion techniques so it's um, just one of the floppy zipper bags so and here's the other half of the yarn for the other side of the sock or the other sock other side of the sock 
All right, so that was it for my works in progress. So I might actually have a hoe next week. I'll be, that'll be awesome. All right, so um, one thing I did last week that I want to do again this week is talk about some pattern recommendations. Um, if you've used Ravelry lately, you may notice that they have this thing where you can, they give you recommendations based on what you favorite, based on what you like, uh, I mean, what you cue, um, and it's not just patterns, but designers. If you favor a designer, when they have something new come out, it, it'll be in your recommendations. So two of these are from my recommendations, and one I'm just recommending because I really enjoy the way the hat looks. So, and I have a coupon code for it too, if you want it for free. All right, so the first one I'm going to start with is the Quiverful. The Quiverful is by Emily Milliaman, and this is free um, until March 30th with the coupon code Healing Knits. It's all one word. Now, Emily, she is the dyer behind Inked Knits, who is doing the yarn for the March Club. And it's the navy colorway. Um, Emily, she's also, I had a coupon code for her back um, at the end of last year. And she designed this hat. It was going to be like a cathartic knit. A friend had cancer. And it's really heartwarming how, like, people... She was originally going to have it for free for a few folks, and then the word got out, and everybody's, like, downloading this that she knows, and they're going to do, um, like, a little impromptu sort of knit-along, uh, and it's a really cool hat. I haven't actually looked at the pattern yet, but it looks really neat, and I can tell where she's going with this with the construction. Um, the band at the bottom, you knit that like in a long strip and then you probably provisionally cast it on and then you kitchener it and then I'm thinking I don't know and then you knit the top you pick up stitches and you knit the top and it is a really cute cap so check it out that is the quiverful and you'll see the arrow um, inspiration in the quiverful so that is by Emily and then um, to the point by Heidi Kermeyer it's about 550, 549 with the conversion rate because it's Canadian dollars, not US dollars. And if you like the color affection or the stripe study shawl, this is kind of in that same vein, sort of. You can do it all solid. You can do it um, three different colors, five different colors, two different colors. You can do mix and match. Um, you can do big color blocks, small color blocks. I mean, you, you've got a lot of, it looks like at least, um, customization you can do. Um, but it's very striking, the pictures that they had up in Ravelry. The uh, stylized shot was them in black and white, the shawl, and it really looked outstanding. So I like the to the point. And then um, I like this one. It's called Zagat by Jennifer Dussault. It's um, a scarf pattern, and it's just really light and leafy and airy, and just really nice. It just kind of reminds me of something that you would like for the spring. So, and that one's five dollars. So not bad. All right. So in time out. I still have my Downton Abbey Mystery KL, Jason's sweater like I talked about before, and my Don't Cage Me In um, socks by Heather of Highland Handmaids, and the Fiber Easta Files. Yeah. So I need to finish those because I went out and bought Heather's newest sock pattern, the Level Up sock. I talked about it last week. And I sure did go and I bought that sucker as soon as I could. Um, so I've got to finish up the Don't Cage Me In socks so I can start the level up socks. All right. And I do have a stash enhancement. Um, I have not 
purchased any yarn on a whim since the Lion brand yarn. And I've kind of uh, adjusted my philosophy with the yarn. I think, unless this comes in my three Irish girls shipment, which is the stash menagerie, which you get a little bit of everything. Unless it comes in that, I am not going to buy yarn until the knitting retreat. Well, okay. Probably Maryland Sheep and Wool is the first place I'll buy yarn. But then again, I won't buy again after that until Zombie Knit Apocalypse, which I bought my plane tickets for this week. So, job, no job, I'm going because I bought the tickets. So, I'm going to Rochester, Minnesota in June. Anyway, getting back to stash enhancements, um, I digress quite a bit. I got this this week. This is a new base. It is definitely different. It is thick and thin. It is very art yarny-ish. And a lot of people would be like, well, what are you going to do with something like crazy? Because you, you can see there's, so there's some thin pieces where the two plies are about the same. And then there's some fluffy pieces where it's one really loosely plied yarn or twist ply and one that's, you know, really thin. Um, I'll probably make a cowl out of this. This will probably become a cowl. I like that idea. So this is 100% um, Merino. It is their Pippin base. This is a new base for them. So the Pippin base. Uh, it knits up on size 11 to 13 needles. It's three and a half ounces, 119 yards. And this colorway is Care Paravel. So um, I actually haven't even. Let's see. So there we go. Oh, look how fluffy that is. Oh, that's so pretty. Look at that. I don't want to take it apart too much. So, but you get the point. So yeah, a nice cowl, um, 119 yards. I'll have to figure out maybe a collar type pattern. I guess the Zagat, when you think about it, that by Jennifer Dusso, I call it a scarf. It's really not. I, it's more of a cowl, it's or a collar, because you can button it up, or you can use. She's got like ribbon where you can um, use ribbon to fasten it together. So okay, well enough fiddling with that. I'm sorry. Okay, um, I did no spinning this week. None. I haven't spun in a few weeks. I need to get on that, and I know I say that every week. Uh, but things are kind of crazy. Um, bags, I've been sewing. I, I have two sweater bags currently in progress and a third or fourth that I can make up. I just need to find the time to do that. I got two orders out in the mail yesterday, so yay. Uh, I hope you guys like them. So that'll be uh, something that I work on here uh, this week or tomorrow get those out in the mail and that is all I have I really I just I've been knitting and I've been my approach to this has been not so much knitting in a straight set on certain things do a little bit here do a little bit here do a little bit here a little bit here and eventually they'll all get finished so the more I get off the needles I won't start it I, you know what I'm going to say? I'm not going to start any new projects. The Rocky Coast Cardigan is going to be it until I finish everything I have on my needles. Either I finish it or I frog it. That's going to be it. So I'm knitting to zero. You heard it here first. I'm going to knit to zero. Alrighty, everybody. That's all I have. So thank you for joining me yet again. Um, if you have not yet purchase the level up sock by Heather 
I would highly, highly do so if you can. The proceeds from the sale of that sock this week, and you may only have another day or two to get on in on this, goes to three different charities, um, e you know, equally, because it's a $3 sock pattern, so each of the charities gets a dollar. So, and I think next week she is going to offer it for free, but I know a lot of people wrapped it on Tuesday, yesterday. Yeah, to tell you the kind of week I've been having, I completely forgot today was Wednesday, and I have a standing 12 o'clock noon meeting every Wednesday at work. Completely forgot about it. It was probably 1.30 before I realized, wait, something's not right, and I pinged my coworker, and I was like, I missed the meeting today. And he's like, yeah. You did, but it's okay. There was nothing important. I was like, sorry, I was working. I really was. I mean, I was into my stuff today, and it was hilarious. I felt kind of bad, but then again, I really didn't. I've been so tired. I had some bad insomnia Wednesday, last week, starting last week. Wednesday night, I couldn't sleep very well, and all weekend, I didn't sleep very well. Sunday night was horrible. I get up at 3.30 in the morning, and I didn't fall asleep until after midnight, and I, oh my gosh, I was worried I wasn't going to make it home on Monday night. So, last two nights, much better sleep, much better sleep, but I'm still dragging. I'm tired, so hopefully I can catch up this week, so... Alright, I know I've said this like three times, but that's all I have. So thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy the new angle. I have the camera in a new position. So uh, let me know what you think. So thanks everybody and have a great week. Bye. Bye.